Hey everybody, welcome to the photo studio. Well today it's a nasty day outside, it's minus 19, it's snowing like crazy, I'm here. It's a Tuesday, I have to work all day, so I get everything caught up that I need to catch up on and I thought, let's do something fun today. So today I'm going to show you how to do some painting with light. Now, what does that mean? It means pretty much you shut all the lights off and you use some type of a light source to light your subject and you paint with it. So you can do different things. You can use different colors. You can do so much stuff with it. it it's fun to do. But today I'm gonna to do a really basic how to start, how to get into it, what do you need, and just show you that. And maybe if it's a boring week because the weather's supposed to be cold, then I'll do another one later on in the week or maybe next week to show you a little bit more. So, what do you need? Well, pretty straightforward. You need a camera. I strongly recommend, strongly recommend a good tripod um, or even just a tripod. It can be a cheaper one as long as it's together, as long as it's not sagging, as long as it's not wiggling and stuff. There's not wind you have to worry about your inside. Um, people will say, well, can I set it on a table? Can I do this? Yeah, you can do all that, but a tripod just is so much easier. You can aim it, you can just so much easier. Um, the next thing you need is a subject. And today for the subject, I am using some woodworking that I do bottle of wine, a couple glasses. I've set it onto a black background that I have here, onto a table. You don't need a special table. This just happens to be one in the studio, um, a messy studio at that because it's full of frames and everything like that. So I've got that set up. I got my flashlight, um, pretty basic flashlight, LED flashlight. Um, you can see there, it's got bright, it's got dimmer, and it's got off. You can move the beam, you can concentrate it more, you can spread it wider. Pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty basic. Camera set up, I've got the camera composed so that my subject is within the picture that I want. Always take a picture before you start painting with light. Just so much easier when the lights are on to make sure that it's all set up and arranged and everything than to try to do it when the lights are off. Next thing that you're going to want to do is leave it on program mode. Just snap a couple quick pictures just to make sure that everything is good. Make sure that it's focused on your subject. If it's focused on your subject, if everything looks good, the composition and everything, uh, nothing, nothing looks out of the ordinary to you from your subject, then what I recommend is putting it on manual focus and also shutting off the image stabilizing. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Then turn it to manual. Now, what do I like to do? I like to use as small as aperture as possible, so that's the highest number possible. On this lens here, which is a 24 to 70 f4 lens, the highest number where I'm set at is f22. Then I also turn it to 30 seconds. 30 seconds may be too much for you, 30 seconds may not be enough for you. The good thing about 30 seconds is, is that most cameras out there, you can set to 30 seconds. Now, I'm using a 5D Mark IV, which I can actually set for all different times, but I'm setting it up as if it was just a normal camera, if it was a 70D, if it was a Rebel, whatever. Manual, 30 seconds, F22. ISO, you want to turn your ISO down as low as possible. So on this camera, it's 100 ISO. So you turn that down. Now, everything is set up. Everything's ready to go. I'm not sure how it's going to work when I turn off the, all the lights with the video. Your camera light is off. Room lights are on. Use your flashlight so you can find your way back in. So here I am here. You can see what my light does with the video camera, how it's lighting it up here. This is what you're basically going to do when you're taking a picture is you're going to walk around it and you're going to take some pictures while you're lighting it with a flashlight. Now, you want to keep your subject away from a wall. You want to keep your subject away from everything so you can walk around it. And then away you go from there. Now, with this flashlight, I have two intensities. I'm going to turn it down just so that it's not too bright. And then I'm going to take my first picture. Now, I'm hiding the light so it doesn't show. And I'm going to take the first picture. There's the picture, and now I'm going to go and paint with the light. I don't want to stay in one spot too much, 
because otherwise you get what's called burnout and it just burns out your subject. So I'm moving around, hide the light so you can't see it when I walk behind. Come to this side and paint a little bit more. Come over here and do a little bit more painting. And I am done. And if we're fortunate, the camera shuts off now and we get to take a look at the shot that we got. So that's the basics of painting with light. As you can see, I'm back here sitting in my office. I did about 30 minutes of video, but because it's video, you don't get the effect. It looks like the same thing every time. Somebody going up, going like this, coming back, looking at the picture. It's only in the still picture, the longer exposure that you actually see and you actually capture that light. So I, I'm not gonna bore you with the video of it, but that's the basics of it. Now, some suggestions. First one is always keep your flashlight moving. You're painting with light. You want to keep it moving. It gives a smoother look. If you hold the flashlight still and the beam is hitting your subject for a long time, it'll just burn a big white mark on it and you just won't get any nice looks to it. It'll just be white. Now, the other thing, don't aim your flashlight at the camera because it'll just give you a white blur on the picture and it'll just ruin the picture. Aim the flashlight down, aim the flashlight up, aim the flashlight from angles, but don't aim it directly at the picture. You also wanna create the narrowest beam that you can. On this flashlight, it actually zooms in and out so I can get quite a narrow beam. If you can't get a narrow beam on your flashlight, tape some paper around the end of it and that'll create a narrow beam. The darker the paper, the better because then you don't get the bleed out from the paper. Why do you want a narrow beam? Well, you wanna light your subject, the object that you're painting, you don't want to light the entire room because if you light the entire room, you're just going to get a muddy background or you'll see stuff in the background and you don't want that. You want to just light the subject. Now, I just use the white background in my studio. And generally when I do it, I'm always shooting vertical, but because of the video that I'm doing, I have a wider view to occupy. So I'm shooting horizontal. So it looks like I'm shooting a quite a big area. But when you're shooting a subject, you can just concentrate on that subject and work with that. If you can't get a dark enough background for any reason or a clean enough background, hang a sheet or a towel. The darker, the better. Dark blue, dark red, anything like that to absorb some light. That will work as well. If you notice that you're no seeing a lot of light around your subject, that's probably because you have light bleed coming in from windows, coming in from doors. You want this to be as dark as humanly possible. Do it at nighttime if you have to, but even street lights will affect the look and get to, get to know what's there. I shoot a couple pictures without doing anything just to see if the picture is bright, if there's stuff coming in. And here at the studio, there's actually a French door behind me and the light from the waiting room comes in. So I shut the light off in the waiting room, but still a little bit came in, but it wasn't enough to really see it. If you're getting the, uh, the extra light that you don't want, shorten the time that you're doing this. I did them at 30 seconds. I think I did a couple at, tw at 20 seconds as well. But if you have to shorten it down to 15 seconds. Problem there is 15 seconds isn't a lot of time to run around and do your painting. If you have a, somebody to help you, it may help because they can hit the button, you can start painting right away. But 15 seconds is really pushing it. I find 20, between 20 and 30 about the right amount of time. Any longer than 30 and I find that my flashlights and everything are just way too bright for it. But again, you could definitely put something over the end to reduce the amount of light. Now, speaking about that, a few good things to put over the end. I think I already mentioned one is you can put a Kleenex over the end, paper towel, put an elastic band over it. It'll reduce the amount of light coming out, soften the light. You can put a J cloth over the end. That'll actually give it a bluer light. If you want to add colors, you can use plastic bags that have colors on them. You don't have to go and buy filters or gels or anything like that. You can put a bread bag over it. And if the bread bag has yellow on it or red on it or brown on it or whatever, it'll add that cast to the picture. You can even shine the light off of something that is one color to put on the subject. There's so much you can do. You're really not limited to anything other than just having fun. Now I did some pictures. Um, you can see here, I'll pull one up here. 
I did a bunch of pictures. I did the one that you saw earlier, and I really like this one. But then I decided that I'd like to add something a little bit more to it. So I did a little bit of arching to it. I like that. It looked really good. I've got a bunch over here. And I picked four that I really, really like. The one, the arch, it just runs out of the picture a little bit too much because I was shooting uh, horizontally and not vertically. But I really think that... I really like it because it really concentrates your eye on the bottle and on the wood stuff. And the other one where there's more room around it, I, I think that would look better if I cropped it as a vertical. But because I am doing the video here and because I can only show so much in the screen and I have a proportion to work with, it, it works okay. But you can do so much. So if the weather's not nice where you are, get out there. Have some fun. Play with it. And I guess you don't even have to go out there. You can do it at home. Set up something, do some painting, and see what you get. Let me know if you tried it in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to my channel, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye now.